What's up? I'm KC with Church Tech Creative, and in this video, I'm going to condense years of research, testing, and learning into what I believe are the best fundamentals that you need to create a cinematic live experience. I'm going to quickly cover what a cinematic online experience looks like, essential camera moves, camera safety and setup, and the 10 vital camera operator roles. What does a cinematic online experience actually look like? Images that are captured in a dynamic, well-composed, energetic way that is engaging and compels the audience to watch. I believe that it's specific moments that are captured or created that makes the audience feel like they're actually there. Pretty much, it looks like a cool music video. Okay, so what are the two most important things that you need to actually create this? Composition, energy. So let's talk about how we get those two very important things. Composition. Basically, composition is what is in the frame and where it's located. Let's make creating good composition easy. Think about it like this. You can break down most creative, well-composed shots for live experiences with the rule of thirds and by creating depth. The rule of thirds states that your subject should be in one of the thirds of the screen. Our eyes are naturally drawn to these four intersecting points, so placing your subject within one of the thirds close to one of those intersecting points is a very cinematic look and is used in a lot of major motion pictures. Creating depth is when you make your subject stand out from the background or the foreground. The easiest way to do this is by blurring the background or using an aperture like 1.8. Uh, we'll talk more about aperture later. Another way is by using something interesting in the foreground that is actually not in focus but creates depth in an image. The second biggest thing that creates a cinematic experience is energy. If you want a dynamic look, you have to capture or create energy. How do we do that? First, go mobile with your camera. Non-moving or static tripod shots are great for some things, but if you really want to create energy, you have to get moving with your camera. Now, obviously there are jibs and track dollies, uh, dactyl cams, all kinds of fun stuff that can make cameras move, but what I'm talking about is the easiest and probably the least expensive way. Smoothly move your body back and forth to create more motion with your camera. You can also zoom in to a subject that may not be moving much on stage and a tight moving shot is naturally energetic. So one quick thing, hit that like button for me if you're getting any kind of value from this content. I do a lot of research and testing to bring you the most helpful content I can and hitting that like button for me helps this video get seen more and helps me continue to do that for you guys. All right, now that we know how to compose an image, here are some essential handheld camera moves that will bring more energy to your live stream. The whip pan. Say whip, whip. I'll say cool whip, cool whip. This motion is mostly used for transitioning to another shot or creating a dynamic transition in between two subjects on stage. The handheld whip feels really energetic with live music. And when using the whip pan for energy on stage, you really have to nail the mark meaning you really have to know exactly what you're going to end on in the composition. Used correctly, this move creates some of the best cinematic energy for live worship. The arc shot. The arc shot orbits the camera around a subject and is typically used uh, when the subject is not moving much. Detail shots. This is a shot usually tightly framed and takes up most of the screen. Detail shots can work best with guitars or keys, but can also work with faces or hands. The crash zoom. Essentially, this is just a very fast zoom that is focused at the very end of the zoom. It's great for high energy songs or even transitioning to another shot. Okay, so now you know the visual basics, but what do we actually need to know about our camera? Let's talk about camera safety and the eight settings you need to know. First things first, let's keep this amazing piece of gear safe. Anytime you move it onto or from a tripod, keep a solid grip on it. If it's a cabled camera and you wanna roam with it, Tape a little extra cable to the top of the camera or a handle somewhere where it's safe. That way if you accidentally step on the cable, you'll pull the tape and not the port. Remember to check all the gear that's attached to the camera to make sure that it's safely connected. Like transmitters or LED monitors, make sure they are secure and don't impede on your operation of the camera. And this is probably the most important one. Don't lock your knees <laughs> when operating the camera. <laughs> I'm sure you guys can guess why this is important. Trust me, we've seen it happen. Now for the image setup. There are eight settings that can make or break how your image looks. Frame rate, aperture, 
ISO, focus, shutter speed, white balance, leveling, and tripod tension. Knowing what these are and how to change them if one isn't right is essential to getting a cinematic image. I'll be demonstrating this on a Sony FS5 Mark II, but this will translate to most any camera that you'll use. Number one, frame rate. It's the first in line to create a cinematic image. Frame rate is the number of images taken per second in your camera. You'll most likely never have to change this in a live setting because it will be set and left for your live broadcast. Frame rates mostly affect the motion blur in your image. So basically, this is the standard for movies and TV shows and it was determined to be the minimum speed needed to capture a video while maintaining realistic motion blur. 24 frames per second will give you the most cinematic look as it creates a very specific motion blur similar to feature films. The higher you go with frames per second, the more smooth the motion blur is gonna look and the more you're going to start to look like a news broadcast. I don't believe you. Simply put, use 24 frames per second and that'll give you a film look. Number two, aperture. Your aperture is what you will have to change the most often. It's also the most used to get the correct exposure in an image. An aperture, or sometimes called an f-stop, is the opening in your lens that allows light to travel in. The smaller the number, like an aperture of 1.8, the more light that you're actually letting in and the more shallow the depth of field is. A shallow depth of field means that you have a very short range of focus and that things will be blurred out in the background. The larger the number, like an aperture of 6.4, the less light you're actually letting into the lens and the more wide of depth of field you're going to have. This is called a wide depth of field because more things are in focus with a larger aperture. On this camera, the aperture is a wheel on the grip. If you start to see an image overexposed or too bright, we have the zebra stripe setting on this camera to help us judge that. So what you wanna do is bring the aperture number up, letting less light in. If you see your image being too dark, then you need to bring your aperture number down, bringing in more light. Our goal with changing the aperture like this is to get the exposure of your image correct. All right, number three, ISO. ISO, or sometimes called gain, is your camera's way of creating artificial light. Higher the ISO number is, the more sensitive your camera sensor becomes and the brighter your image will appear too high of an ISO number and your image is going to start to be grainy. So use higher ISO numbers when shooting in lower light situations and your aperture is already at its lowest number. Basically meaning that your lens is already naturally bringing in as much light as it can. So you want to create that artificial light, the ISO, with your camera. Some cameras like this one even have a toggle switch for low, medium, and high ISO. You want to stay at your lowest setting until you need to bump it up to medium or high for a shot where you have low light. Number four, focus. Focus is pretty much what it sounds like. When your camera is in focus, your subject in your image is sharp and clear. When it's out of focus, your subject in your image is blurry. You have an option for auto or manual focus. Use autofocus until you're a boss with manually focusing the lens. This camera, like many others, will have autofocus and will focus on someone's face naturally. Number five, shutter speed. Shutter speed is very important to get right, but it could also be one of the most difficult concepts to understand. So for this reason, in this basic training of shutter speed, I'm going to cover only what you need to know to make it look correct for a live cinematic experience. Once set on your camera for a live capture, you won't have to adjust this unless the value gets changed. This can happen especially on cameras like this model since so many buttons are very easily pushed during use. Just know what value your shutter speed needs to be for your specific broadcast and know how to change it back if something gets bumped. Okay, so your shutter speed is almost like an eyelid to your camera, allowing your sensor to capture what it sees to your live feed. Shutter speed mostly affects motion blur and exposure in your image. The lower the shutter speed, the more motion blur and the brighter the image. The faster the shutter speed, the less motion blur and the darker the image. The most important thing to remember with shutter speed is that it should be double your frames per second. In other words, if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, your shutter speed needs to be double that. Number six, white balance. White balance in cinema is measured in Kelvin and it determines whether someone's skin tone looks like they're a human being or whether they're beginning to turn into an Oompa Loompa. Oompa Ranging from 1000K to 10,000K, the lower the K number, the closer it is to candlelight or the warmer it is. The higher the K number, the cooler it is or the closer to moonlight it is. 
This is another setting that you shouldn't have to change much while you're live. But again, it's easily bumped, so know what your specific Kelvin number is for your Y balance and know exactly how to change it back if it gets bumped during the use of the camera. Number seven and eight, leveling and tripod tension. These are the two things that you have to know how to adjust on the fly. Cameras are on and off tripods quite often during live events. Most fluid head tripods have a leveling bubble on them and allow you to level it. Now, tripod tension is the drag on your fluid head and will make or break the smoothness of your panning and tilting. Jerky movements while capturing a speaker is one of the most distracting things that you can do live. Adjust the tension or drag on your tripod until you can easily move it with two fingers. All right, so those are the basics of your camera setup and operation. Let's move on to another very important point, the 10 vital roles of a camera operator. Number one, wear black. Wearing black allows you to blend into the background and not be distracting to the audience. It also makes you feel like Johnny Cash. Number two, know how to navigate the camera functions. If something gets changed during a live experience and you don't know in your camera how to diagnose it or how to fix it, your camera feed is unusable. Number three, know how to capture cinematic camera angles. You should have a basic knowledge of this. Use the rehearsal time to practice good composition and angles to use during the event. Number four, be familiar with the songs of the week. You'll be better at capturing those perfect moments if you know the songs of the week and or the plan of the event. Number five, listen to the video director. Most drop shots happen when the cam ops do not know that they are live. Some cameras will actually have a tally light on them to let you know when you're live. But if your camera doesn't have that, you have to listen to your director to ensure that you know when your feed is live. A good rule of thumb is if you don't know that you're live, you're live. Number six, create energy with movement. Steady your camera with at least three points of contact. Three points of contact being your hands and your body. Then move slowly and smoothly back and forth to create energy and dynamics. Number seven, no camera lingo. Zoom in, pull out, headroom, tight, wide, transition, whip, pan, tilt, follow, center, steady, focus, ISO, aperture, white balance, auto, manual, frame, exposure, standby, take, live, and any others that your team may use. Number eight, get inspired. Watch other church worship experiences for inspiration. Number nine, don't speak in the comms during the sermon. There are exceptions, of course, like needing to be relieved or something goes terribly wrong with your camera and you don't know how to fix it. But keep this to an absolute minimum since you're much louder in your comms than you think you are. Number 10, remember correct headroom, leading, or looking room. Even though this is the last, it's definitely not the least. This can be one of the most distracting things to your online audience if not done well. If you really want to take it to the next level, be sure to check out my top 10 cinematic camera moves video here. All of these basics are very important. But if you don't know the camera moves, then you're missing a big part of what actually makes your live experience cinematic.